Oh, isn't that beautiful? That beautiful orb in the sky, clear blue skies, and it's nice and toasty and warm on the patio. And I've got time today on a day that is a Sunday, and it is a sunny day. <laughs> and now just watch. It was a quiet day, but seeing as I hit record, <laughs> there could be some noise pollution starting up, as it always happens. So, I welcome you to a full-on tour of my patio, because many, many, many videos ago, Joan Anderson, and I don't even remember which one, but she says, oh, she's beautiful, but she would like to see more of the orchids. So, I haven't done a patio tour in Yonks, so much to do during the summer months, but today I am going to take you through everything that I've got on my patio for the time being, noise pollution permitting, <laughs> because also the neighbors have a fabulous barbecue going on. You would think that we were in May. I wish. Unfortunately, evolution didn't do me a favor in this life cycle. I didn't return as a hedgehog, but that would be my preferred animal to come back as a hedgehog. I just go to sleep during the winter and then when my little earth space gets all nice and warm and toasty again, that's when I wake up and ta-da! <laughs> in the perfect world. Maybe I did something right in this life cycle and I shall come back as a hedgehog in my next life. Who knows? But yes, barbecue in the air, sunny day. I really should be in shorts, but I'm, you know, I have trust issues this time of year. So, anywho, we are on the east side and we're staring at the shelf with the top guns, as I like to call them. The highlight orchids, the ones that want a little bit more heat. And during the growing season, the east side provides all of that good stuff. Now, you can see that the top is already empty. My Ancelia Africanas normally live up there, but they have moved to the patio table. We'll have a look at them shortly. But what you basically see here are some of the vendacious orchids that I have in Lekka and self-watering, and then lots and lots of Cattleyas. And my Rinculalia Digbiana growing beautifully. And something I've noticed in general, <laughs> Orchids are coming into bloom two months ahead of time, even though some haven't bloomed, but you know what? This has been the weirdest year. This is not a yearly recap or anything like that, but you know, recently I took some garbage out. I'm feeling a little bit lighter and more uplifted because sometimes when orchids are languishing, it kind of weighs heavy on my mind. And you can see I've got time today. So if you're still here and haven't like gone, what is she on about? Let's go in, have a little closer look, and just have a look-see at how they are coping, because not long from here on in, this shelf will move to the west side. What I'm waiting for is the morning sun to be quicker on the west side than it is on the east side, if that makes sense. Right now, the morning sun comes straight onto the east side first thing, and still has a little way to travel around so that it hits the west side. Once the sun has dropped a little lower in the sky even, the west side will get the morning sun. That is when this shelf goes right over to the west side and the major orchid shuffle can begin. And here we go. Let's get in a little bit closer. It's not like there's much happening, but you know, Joan Anderson, let's have a look at some orchids. On the top shelf here, I mean, all the orchids that are up here are kind of like either finishing a new growth, spiking, as we recently saw. If you didn't see that video, I will link it in the description on the weirdest orchid tag. So now my Neostylus loose neary blue doesn't just have the one spike that is up here on the main fan, but since that video, the second fan down here also has a spike. It's going to be super interesting to see these blooms again. I'm excited to give you an update whether they're still weird. <laughs> and if they are, well, they're my little weird ones. Pacavia is also growing two new growths. I don't know if I should just take the camera and show you everything, but just, you know, let's see if we can get in a bit closer. It's, you know, I'm a bit loath to move everything because daylight, even though I said I had time today, I had time today to show you orchids, but all the shuffle and everything, yeah, anyway. Pacavia is growing its two new growths, which is astounding for me this time of year. It just makes no sense at all. 
it, <laughs> normally she starts midwinter and then I just hope and pray for good light. But here we are, ongoings and happenings that have me completely surprised. But check this out. I've still got two buds here on my Francis Fox and I keep watching those buds because seeing as the temperatures are a little bit all over the place, uh, <clears throat> if I bring this orchid in now to protect the buds, I will have bud blasts. So <laughs> it's a little bit of a race against time. Who is going to come first, the blooms or the cold temps, and then we'll have bud blast anyway. So I'm playing a little bit of a risky game here to hopefully get Francis Fox to bloom out. And then we have our gorgeous happy holiday in the back here. Look at that. Oh, you can't look at that because I'm not showing it to you properly. There you go. Look at that chubby sheath. Hmm. I spy with my little eye. Maybe three buds in there. <laughs> and then can you see, can you see that back in there? <laughs> Let's scooch around the corner. Oh, and I just saw a lecker bead. I need to pick that up. Hang on a second. Can't have me them lecker beads on the floor. Look at who's in bloom. Golden cellar. Yeah, I can move that one to the front a little bit so we can have a closer look. Being mindful of buds. Yep. Honk if you're happy about orchids in bud and bloom. <laughs> Pretty much. I told you when I hit record, it's just going to kick off. That's when the noise starts. Amazing. There we go. Shuffle you back a bit, bring you forward. I could actually bring Golden Cellar now to the blooming alley because, well, bloom, 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 bloom. Let me bring you in. One bloom, Golden Cellar. She's a bit wonky, not standing upright, but she is perfect. She is beautiful. She has no signs of fossarium, which we discovered during the summer that this orchid is actually riddled with fossarium. Whether it is dead or alive, as far as I'm concerned, she's coping with the fossarium. But yeah, our bloom, that opened fully yesterday. As of now, she doesn't have a fragrance at all. Pretty pretty. Very pleased to see this bloom. I was hoping maybe for two, but that would be probably asking too much. Just the fact that she's alive after having disturbed her, I don't think I triggered the Fusarium to activate. So one bloom, happy days, we will take it. Let's go down to the next shelf. Not such a pretty sight as what we just saw with the golden cellar bloom because we've got a lot of burnt leaves <laughs> from yesteryear. That's Sagarig Wax African Beauty. No new growth since I prematurely cut the buds off early in the season. Kind of surprising, but you know, bifoliate. Let her do herself, whatever. Of course, if she starts growing her new growth during the winter, yep, well, those buds are going to come off again. I am not going to let this orchid stress herself out. In the back, though, I've got the perparatas. Yeah. Come here, Zagarik. You have got to go for a moment. There we go. The perparatas are way ahead of schedule in the back. Huge growth. There's a sheath in there as well. There we go. That's one with a sheath. That growth there on my Werkhäuseri, that should not even be that big. <laughs> and here I am, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying it's astounding because if I think of my orchids as being out of sync, well, this is so unusual for me to have these growths already so well advanced while I try to turn it so you can see it and I'm getting it all wrong. There we go. That's just you know, that just doesn't happen in my climate. But here we are, so happy that it's happening early. At least I don't have to fret throughout the winter months. And then let's take Mailman out of the way, who disappointed this season with more Bud Blast. Fun and games, Space Hog at the moment, but no performance other than just great, great new growths. And here's another Perparata. Just checking, we did a scale treatment, those bodies are dead with those aerial roots going to make life a little complicated on the shelves. <clears throat> but look at that growth down there. That's, you know, yeah, that has not happened in my collection before either. But what else is going on on this shelf? <laughs> you see them buds over there? <laughs> that, my friends, is a Sunya Green, an unnamed variety. It's just Sunya Green. 
having just scolded mailman for being a shelf hog, not performing, not delivering, no blooms from the mailman, Sunya Green, unnamed variety, two buds, and that'll be a first, which I think is pretty amazing. And also, a little bit of a race against time, just like with the Francis Fox and, well, all the others that are in bud at the moment. But wouldn't that be cool if they made it? Ooh, I am so ready for some beautiful big green blooms that smell, actually, of lemon, but not like creamy lemon. Very, very lemon, like Lemon rind, the essential oil that squirts into your nose and you need to sneeze. That kind of lemon. That would be yum. Everybody else here? Hmm. What I was really pleased to see is that my little Gyrac Cosmos that I got from Anonymous, doing fabulously. It's grown three new growths. No blooms, but you know, root growth, new growth, settled in fantastically. If you're a fan of the fiddle, I highly recommend you watch that video because I've got two cameras going where I take that orchid off her mount and potted her up. It was fantastic. Not to edit so much, but <laughs> to see that I could work with two cameras. Woo, my mind was a little bit blitzed after that editing. <laughs> Lots of stars here on this shelf. I do love them all so much. Really looking forward to seeing what my Rincolalia digbiana is going to do because this is not normal for me either. I normally do not see these growths so early in the season. Normally, I'm really fussing over this orchid as it is in the indoor growth space, forming new growth so that I will get some blooms. This is ridiculous for me. Happy ridiculous, no complaints, but I can tell you, I have never seen my Rincolelia digbiana this far advanced during this time of year. And you know, just like with the purpuratus, it makes me happy because it finally got enough sun and heat that it likes to be able to bloom well. And maybe we'll get two blooms again this season, which I have not achieved in the two years after 2020 when both leads actually bloomed. This one always bloomed, this lead, but this one didn't for the past two years. Now that she's done it during the right time of year, keeping our fingers crossed, wouldn't that be lovely? Going down to the ground floor, so to speak, got the Myrmecophila tibicinus to the left. The wiring in has worked a treat, of course, and it has also served another purpose. It let the orchid grow without any hindrance, without getting blown out of the pot. That's the new growth from one lead. There's two new growths on this lead over there. And she is actually solid in the pot now, but <laughs> I'm not taking the wiring out because too much can happen with this orchid. Also, who did very well is my Ophiocleta spathulifera. Never had a big leaf span like this. And the roots are growing. Oh, where are you? Right there. Oh, the roots of this orchid, they are gorgeous. Just uh, big, white, chubby, chubby roots. So this is nice to see. Grow her mainly for the leaves. Don't know if we'll ever see blooms on her. I don't like the fact that mine loses the leaves and I can't hold on to them. Every new growth will keep its leaves and then, yeah, maybe I should try the Schilleriana trick and give it more calcium. Now there's an idea. Okay. Someone who hasn't done very well is my Tetratonia Dark Print. <sighs> I think I need to get this one into lava rock and see how it performs. Now's not the time. I've got no roots. Somebody who's fared a little bit better is my Sutkinoi. There's that new growth. We're waiting for some roots to grow into the pot, which makes me think, yeah, it's a bit dry. I may need to give it a little bit of water. The microfiber is still damp, but the reservoir is empty because of the colder nights. Here's my Demophorcus lowii, holding on. I forgot to bring it in last night. It should have come in. It doesn't like the cold. You can see the anthocyanin is showing me. I'm going to take this one in after our patio tour, because the Renanthera caloptera that one did come in last night. Why I then forgot to bring in the lowy eye, that I don't know. That was just stupid. Error, I need to get my, you know, my shuffle groove on. And then we have 
Patricia von Frühenbrock, the microfibers are still damp, that's fine. So she's down here. The cane that we snapped on the repotting, let me say that again, the cane that I snapped on the repotting hasn't desiccated too much, trying to grow its own roots, it's fine. Dendrobiums, gotta love them. I've got King here pushing his way through. I don't like that one bit because he shouldn't be so close to the orchids. And then here, testing the microfiber, is Dendrobium gyrac horn, who we didn't see bloom this year because Dum Dum here made a mistake with the setup. And well, it's a recovering orchid, but it has recovered. And it's growing its root system. So hopefully in 2023, we'll see those beautiful purple, bronzy, antelope-type blooms again. And now, let me just show you very quickly, as an update, the epidendrum from Insu Orchids and ADD settled nicely into its pot. No complaints, just perfect, love that. My last and existing Leonis has to go inside. Don't want to lose that. I lost my other Leonis at the beginning of the year, so yeah. There will be no replacements of orchids that I lose, just because I will have learned my lesson that the circumstances have changed and I can't keep taking care of orchids that can't deal with the circumstances I have right now. And this is my Tsuru, my Speciosum my Tsuru. Now, this one only gave me one new growth this season. It should actually grow another growth around the back here, because when the leaves lose their variegation, for example, like you can see here, they're losing their variegation, that means another new growth is starting. Honestly, this orchid has never bloomed for me, but she's growing well. I love the look of the leaves, and that makes me happy. Shall we go to the table and have a look at our Ancelias? Because they are in gorgeous, gorgeous sunshine. Oh. Just amazing. The light is incredible. Pretty, huh? Oh, yeah, I love it when the sun shines. That's why they're down here. As you saw the top shelf of the east side there, that was already in the shade. And here they get a lot, a lot of sun way late into the afternoon. So I'm losing some leaves, but they don't pop off. This one's popped off. Every once in a while, I just give them a tug and check them out. What can I pop off and what can stay on? They've been very, very thirsty, even up until now, so I've still been pumping in a lot of nutrients. They've been drinking their reservoir up within two days. It's just been insane to observe. At the moment, I've been focusing more on calcium magnesium, and today they've got a dose of calcium nitrate. Calcium, 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 because if, for example, there's a problem with space indoors, if I can give them calcium, and then keep them toasty and somewhat warmer on the west side patio where the terracotta heats up, maybe I can get away with having them outside if space becomes a problem. Another orchid that also got wired in and that I'm really pleased, <laughs> at least it's settled down and it's growing another new growth. I don't know if you can see that, but right in there, that's a first. Well, Leave an orchid alone and it will actually grow. What do you know? <laughs> the secret to the orchid hobbit, I tell you, just leave an orchid alone, it'll take care of itself. This one was also, you know, blown around and messed around with the pot. Got it wired in. This new growth here, we haven't established my growth of 2020 yet, but hey, you can't be asking too much. The fact it's alive after being blown around all this time, that is credit to the orchid. And then there's a tiny little growth that came out here in the season, so it does have two leads. And of course, the growing points are facing towards the light so that I can curve the orchid back into the pot without it moving and meandering out there too quickly because I have no intentions of bothering this orchid again for maybe three, four years. <laughs> happy, happy to see that new growth. Fantastic. All right, if that was a little bit too bright for you, Let's go and check out some that are still in the shade. In the shade, but only temporarily. I don't want to be losing the beautiful light green leaves that I have right now on a Maxillaria tenifolia. I would like to have them look like this for a little bit longer, but eventually it'll be the centerpiece of my patio table where it'll get a lot more light and the leaves will start to go a little bit of that, you know, 
Lelia purpurata yellow, as and when it gets more light. And then I've got my nobilies in the back here. This is a no ID that has been growing superbly this year. They've also, all my outdoor orchids have been getting, you know, the calcium nitrate and the calcium magnesium leading up to the colder temperatures. I'm not losing that many leaves. Here's the Cooksonianum. Grew very, very well. I have not reached the pseudobulb lengths of the previous owner, Fernanda Nacimento orchids and succulents. Working on it? Working on it. This orchid is the first time in my climate now a full year. And if I got it right, then I will be able to show some blooms in spring. Let me just check the pot. Yeah, no need to water that. Oh, this is exciting. Anyway, eventually they will be also probably on the east side table when the sun is not as harsh. Seeing as they matured all their growth more in very bright shade, I didn't want to singe the leaves for the duration of the time that the orchid has leaves. <laughs> I've got enough orchids with burnt leaves, I tell you. The ones that I can protect without any issues for the time being. We'll just enjoy some greenery. And then recently decapitated, separated, oh, rescue mode for Vanda Denisoniana. She is resting in that pot in perma shade with a lot of bright light. This morning I had to fill the reservoir that I have. I have a little bit, you know, like two fingers, a centimeter and a half of just water in that pot. However, this morning I also put calcium nitrate in there because I'm like, why is this pot empty? It's not that hot. It's not like it can evaporate. So are we absorbing? Anyway, it's way too early to tell. It's only 72 hours in, but yeah. So that's that part. Now, if I can just scoot you along this way, we have the gaggle of the big ones. My cymbidium is spiking people. That is insane. Let me see how I can get around without, okay, let me move around the table. <laughs> All the way around the table, right. My cymbidium is spiking. This is insanity. And the reason that I can say that it's insanity because they bloom normally end of February, beginning of March for me. I don't see spikes until December, so this is not two months in advance that this one is spiking, because clearly the size of the spikes, they're already so big, these spikes started in September is when I saw them come up. At first I thought, no, I'm gonna get a second flush of growths here. It's impossible that they would spike so soon, but dang, I'll be danged. I only have three spikes. I should get four, so maybe the abnormality here is that three is the way we're going to be heading. But hey, that is insane. That is insane. Just like with what I showed you with the other orchids, doing things two, three months ahead of time. Seeing them already develop in September, that's insane. And once again, I repeat myself because that is what I do here on YouTube. I don't know who watches the videos for the first time, I had the coolest summer ever. I had the coldest, most horrible spring I have ever seen in my 25, 26 years on the Costa del Sol. And my orchids are giving me indications that they feel the same way. If the temperatures drop, they're ready to do their thing, regardless of what the calendar month says. And here we are. And Fias is looking gorgeous as well. Normally by this time the leaves are already more scorched because, you know, heat and dry air. Well, let me tell you, September temperatures hit mid-August. We had a week of complete and utter total wind. Everything was getting shredded on the patio. And then on the 15th of August, woke up and I thought, what is this? My daughter even said, what, are we in September? And I said, yeah. <laughs> you look at the temperatures, yeah. And it wasn't just a one-off. That was it. It stayed calm and cool and nice and crisp afterwards as well. I only had one day that hit 39 degrees Celsius. One day. Okay, it did a lot of damage because I wasn't prepared for that one day. But, you know, this is proof. I kid you not. But I'm loving it because I'm always fighting to see that my fires gets to have nice looking leaves for as long as possible. Because if it's not the sun and the heat, because I don't have space around the rest of my patio, if it's not the sun and the heat that hits it, the wind comes in and shreds these palm frond kind of leaves. So look at that. The seed pods, can we show them? Sure. They're holding on really well as well. I could actually harvest them. Sorry for the jiggle, I've got king around me. 
But yeah, I, I suppose we could harvest them. I just don't know what to do with them. Put them in a Tupperware? I don't know. What would you do with Fias seed pods? Below them is a gaggle of three. <clears throat> Let me see if I can do the family shot. It's not a family, but you know, let's get them all together. Lycasti over here, starting a new growth, which is nice that it is sort of in the middle of the pot. My Neo, for the time being, is still nicely shaded with a lot of bright shade. Put on all its second flush of growth. I'm very happy about that. I would like to get you in closer, but I've got roots growing every which way, and there are still some growing tips, so I'm protecting it. But what I can tell is it's heading into resting mode because the color of the leaves are getting dull. Even though this would be a new leaf, it is dulling out. It's not as fresh and green as it was a week ago. And there's Jack of Diamonds, the one that we stopped from blooming. The leaves look a little bit sorry for themselves, but the bulb is still fine. It has recovered. And uh, Dom Dom here never checked the wiring. <laughs> I don't know if you remember the video or if you haven't, let me know and I'll link it. But uh, the video of this one where I said I was concerned about the wrinkled pseudobulbs, yeah, well, I always looked at this one and I saw it was recovering, but never gave it a second thought that this one was tied to the stake for support back in the day. And it looks a little bit like me when I have a belt on and I take the belt off at night. <laughs> okay. I think it will fill out again, but if not, what you see, that's what happens. That's how small it was, and now it's all plump and nice again. It was a perfect decision not to let this orchid bloom. And if it's trying to throw out another spike for the winter, because that's what this one does as well, in the summer it blooms Jill, female blooms, and in the winter it blooms Jack, male blooms. I won't let this one bloom in the winter either. All right, let's look at the staging area, because, huh. Look at that. Oh, no, don't look at that. It's empty. Yeah, it's empty. I don't know when this video or the other video is going to come out, but the fowls are all inside. There is Lelia Kautskiana down there from Anonymous doing great. The second growth did not grow to size because, shocker, I have another Kautskiana, and when I unboxed this orchid, I saw the size of the Kautskiana. I was like, okay, what have I got? Is this a Kautskiana or is the one that I've got a Kautskiana? Because the growth of mine is very, very small. Well, it turns out maybe because it's acclimating that this growth here is the size of my other Kautskiana as well. We won't know until the next growth, which is already starting down there. But one thing I can tell you, this orchid is completely and fully, fully rooted in solid in the pot as a rock. Coilostylus ciliaris variety or stedii, doing great, needs to come inside eventually. I still have temperatures of around 15 degrees Celsius, so we're okay. Moving you to an osmum down there. Let me get that one, let me show you. We've got time today. Now, <clears throat> I potted this one into Lekka and self-watering because it's been a pathetic little plant for the longest time. You wouldn't think I've had this orchid for four years. Um, I think we're doing better. Yeah, we got a little bit more length out of a cane this season, even though it was the slowest to even get going. But yeah, uh, that makes me, you know, look forward to the future. If it, this is anything to go by maybe 2023, we will have ourselves a nice, proper anosmum cane a respectful anosmum cane. <laughs> and then there is my Prostechia garciana alba, growing completely nuts, completely bonkers in its pot. It is ginormous. Maybe I should get it out. We haven't seen her for the longest time either. And all my utensils, because nobody goes inside without a once over. Here we go. Oh, yes, my voice tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> I think that Prostechia Garciana Alba has taken a little bit of a hint from Cousin It, because the two of them have been patio compadres for the past well, four months. And I think that uh, Garciana Alba looked at him and said, you know what, anything you can do, I can do better. 
this orchid is just bonkers. But I'm so glad it's doing well in its semi-hydro massive bowl. <laughs> I think I've got about 120 new growths in here. <laughs> Look at this. And she is not done yet. So I have to be careful because as it gets colder, you see, I am losing this growth. We might as well take that out. And we might as well, while we're at it, check and see if it's mealybugs. No, it's just climate-based. So we've lost this new growth. Maybe, maybe not. It'll produce roots, though. However, this is not happening throughout the entire bowl. In fact, the bowl is turned this way and the hedge is over there. I'm trying to make sure that the orchid keeps growing back into the pot, being the climber and rambler that she is. I put her in the setup, I think it was in 2020 or 2021, I don't know, but she has already tripled in size since then. And I want to really make sure that I don't have to disturb this one again for a long time. And with that being said, the hedge has much more humidity. So that new growth was a little bit more affected by the humidity. But the others, you guys, <laughs> don't you just love it when it gets scary, when orchids just explode? <laughs> I don't know how that sound came across over the mic. I apologize if that sounded weird. Make the explosion sound. That's what I was trying to do. Fantastic. And I have been wiping the leaves over and over and over again. It's just been a maintenance nightmare. I'm still getting some concertina leaves because as she grows up and away from the media, of course, there's roots that don't hit the media anymore. But yeah, this is just now me nitpicking. <laughs> She's doing wonderfully. But let me show you something. If you are still with me, thank you so much. Oh, by the way, if you're enjoying what you're seeing and enjoying the collection and want to stick around and maybe consider subscribing so that you know who is going to be featured when and next, please consider subscribing and a thumbs up would be great. Yes, I'm showing too. That's because I'm greedy. Maybe somebody else is watching with somebody else with another device. <laughs> then you can, you know, like on both devices. That would be awesome. Thank you so very much. And yeah, if you're not subscribed, we're pretty much seeing 80% of my orchid collection today. <laughs> Because again, I've got time today. It's a sunny day and it's Sunday, fun day. But let me go back to abnormalities. What are you looking at? <laughs> Hello, this is Cousin It. It is Cousin It. It's also called Maxillaria variabilis, but this is Cousin It. And no, before, I have to clarify because Cousin It, you know, we haven't seen him for the longest. And yeah, before he has a sulk and a moan. Uh, check this out. Cousin It is coming into bloom. And you can see that the first blooms are already open quite well. So that means two weeks ago he was coming into bloom. And two weeks ago we were still in October. Now Cousin It surprised me with blooms last year when he started blooming in December, which is also very premature in my opinion, because that normally happens after the new year. And when he is in full bloom, he always reminds me of a fireworks that we just saw because of New Year's Eve. And then he starts to bloom and that's the reminder. That's why I know he comes into bloom in January. Well, he's telling me a different story now. He comes into bloom when he feels it's his time to shine again. Because, yeah, for the longest, like I said, he has not been in the viewfinder. And yet here he is on the patio exploding into, <clears throat> yeah, the monster that he has become. <laughs> and in bloom in November. I can't believe it. But it's wonderful to see Cousin It back. And I'm sure that Cousin It is just going to absolutely love the attention he will be getting in the coming months. Welcome back to the channel, Cousin It. And now here's my gaggle of tolumnias already up against the hedge because I am putting them on their tray at night and bringing them inside. These are some of the ones I am kind of thinking, hello, hello, that's pink brished over there, we'll get there. These are the ones I'm kind of thinking are going to survive, hopefully. And we've also got firm Dalmatian in spike and we've also got the golden... Golden, golden, golden something. Let me check. No, golden nothing. It's brown spots. <laughs> golden, I think, is dying. So we're going to have to make a concerted effort to uh, save golden. But brown spots, 
two gorgeous spikes. Now, I will let them bloom out, we'll document the blooms, we'll dedicate the blooms, and then I will cut the spikes off, because nobody needs to be stressed out after having had a massive scale stress infestation throughout the summer months, which I'm trying to recover them from. Sorry for that jiggle once again. Ahem. Red Devil, also in spike. Looking amazing, you see that? Yeah, those are remnants. But at least now I've got them at my eye level again. It's much easier to go around with my garlic alcohol. Make sure that they are going to be safe. And I'm seeing a body right there on the root. So let me take care of that critter. Make sure that he's dead and isn't trying to reproduce. You're not going to be on my red devil, you devil. <laughs> Get it? Get it? <laughs> I'll be right back. Yeah, I got lucky with that one. That body was dead. But there are no guarantees, and the way my mind is going at the moment with all the things that I have to do, uh, <clears throat> the moment I see something, I deal with it. Seeing as the forget-me-not does not apply at the moment. I am totally forgetting things that need to be done, just like with the Demophorcus loei that I forgot to bring in. Not good. It's having a great season with me. It was doing well. I don't want to blow it just because I'm forgetful, but whoo! Hey, I didn't forget to come and see Pink Brush a little bit closer. First time, the whole orchid, three spikes. I love this. This is what I like to see. The longest spikes ever, the biggest growth ever. So this one has recovered beautifully from the scale attack. Very pleased to see that. That is why I'm letting it bloom out, but I will not allow these spikes to branch. She won't be in bloom for that long. No way, Jose. Winter is coming. It's time to take a rest, and then I'll see you back in, well, whenever you start throwing out new fans and new spikes. This makes me happy. Absolutely. J'adore. I still have more. <laughs> I hope that you're enjoying your beverage as much as I'm enjoying yapping away to you about what's going on and what is not going on. But I have another abnormality to show you. A happy one. It doesn't look that great, does it? I'm losing some pseudobulbs on my Colmenara Masai Red. That's okay. That's normal. They're about, oof, almost, in my care, five years old. And then, of course, they came from the nursery, so I'm losing those, but that's fine. Abnormal, however, is to see this already happening. Check this. Spike out. Here we come with the Masai Spears. I only see one. Normally, oh, no, I don't. I see two. <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, <clears throat> so, here's one, and behind that, on the next growth that hasn't even started to, you know, show any signs of showing a bulb, there's already the next one, which makes me now look a little bit further and try to investigate. Anyway, I don't want to waste your time. Two spikes, that is incredible. This normally doesn't happen until end of December because she blooms for me round about March, April. Yeah, April is more precise than March because I'm always freaking out about the low temperatures that this orchid has to tolerate in my climate. And I'm always begging for the already extended spikes and possibly buds pushing out to hold on because, you know, five degrees Celsius and you've got buds. I'm always keeping my fingers crossed that they will just hold on and bloom. And she always does pull through. <clears throat> this is not normal. This is the one I just saw when I just said only one spike. Here we are, spike number two. And this pseudobulb isn't even getting a bulge. So, fabulous. More calcium nitrate, more calcium and magnesium. <laughs> it's just the strangest ever, but ugh, not complaining, not complaining. It may just not be such a dismal winter after all. Another chair that absolutely inspires me is this one here, Jumelia arborescens on the left, and then my two Blatias that are starting to really go dormant now. I'm losing like leaf after leaf, and I will be repotting them. I'm gonna make a community pot, 
Here's the variegated one from Fernanda Nacimento orchids and succulents. And they're all going to go in one big pot. I'm not going to be separating them out. Seeing as I don't grow my orchids to take them to a show or anything like that, platillas can be in a community pot. I already have a very big bowl for them and then they can just, you know, stay undisturbed. And my Schweinfurtiana hasn't been doing too shabby either. I had a little bit of a spider mite issue during the summer, which, you know, I didn't recognize because I've never had spider mites. And why in the summer that wasn't even warm, in my opinion? Oh, I don't know. But anyway, I lost, uh, I think I lost some leads to spider mites because, of course, I went all ninja with my garlic alcohol and then my soapy wash. So I think I lost some leaves. Leads, not leaves, sorry. You see here are two new growths that look a little bit scrawny, at least while I'm talking. I hope you can see them. You see they are looking a little bit scrawny. Maybe I've busted the growing point, maybe not. But the rest of the orchid is doing pretty well. Also starting to shed some leaves, but you know, we're gaining some height. We're gaining some height. She is, you know, trying. So I'm loving this orchid. She can stay outside. It's perfect for me. And my little podangus down there. Isn't she cute? All by her lonesome now that the slipper orchids are inside and the phalaenopsis are inside. This one comes in and out now as well, as long as the sun is shining outside. But for the night, I bring him inside. And let me tell you something, that thing is going nuts with on the root front. All those roots growing. And I'm hoping that the, that's why I'm not moving it other than bringing it in and out. That one root, I would love for it to go down into the lava rock as opposed to what the others are doing. Of course, growing aerial. This is my gaggle of summer bloomers. In and out schedule for them has already commenced. One I really wanted to show you because, you know, there's always those that I've been concerned about. Here we are. Check out Kaoki Chakut. Look at that. I have a new leaf. Very late in the season to grow this leaf, but huh, I'm not surprised. The summer wasn't warm enough for her either. And then, of course, it promptly lost the other leaf down there, and it looks like it might lose this one as well. But oh, at least I've got some greenery to show for. I'm very pleased about that. The other ones are doing okay. I'm getting a new spike on my sweet memory, which is tucked in the corner here. My Pinkton Bronze Age is growing a new spike. That's the middle one over there. And I'm also getting a new spike in my Tabasco Tex, which is over there. So there's been activity. My Violesa cross with Speciosa over there. Ooh, we may need to do some work eventually. I'm too loath to get into her now, but it's like there's two roots keeping that orchid in the pot. And um, yeah, it's a bit of a wobble when I move her, so I'm always super careful. Scary, scary with that one. If the wind picks up, I even bring her inside because <laughs> that orchid could be ripped out of the pot with a single gust of wind. It's that bad. My favorite table for the time being, well, uh, <laughs> extension included, yonder, we'll get there. My Rapiculus Lelias, to 99% Rapiculus Lelias on this table. But here is the Tulumnia that we took out of the basket because, you know, didn't fit back into the basket because I didn't want to cut the spikes. But look, even the spikes haven't been absorbed yet after all this time. So, yeah. Very, very scale affected. Is also on the tray coming in and out now, <laughs> but she wants to grow a spike. I've been monitoring this one as closely as the others. Of course, having her on the table here next to my Lelias, mm, it's a bit risky, but seeing as I can keep an eye on her like that, uh, I haven't seen any transmission of scale. Not on this table, but I saw a Synchorana starting with scale couple of months ago and I'm like going, oh, H-E double hockey sticks, no, no way. Anyway, they're all doing okay. I'm losing some leaves on my little Gracilis back here. I keep popping them off, you see that? I think that is normal based on the time of year. But the exciting part is my Cernua. You can see that my Cernua right there is already starting to open some leaves. I've got some buds and there's plenty, plenty of new growths all around. So I'm hoping to have a nice little display of bright orange blooms coming soon. In my opinion, that is way too early as well. 
I'm normally used to seeing her much later in the season, including January of the following year when the new growths have started. What can I tell you? Also, my Lelia Diana is starting on a new growth. It's right there. Light training. I'm trying to bring the orchid back into the pot. So the one growth that did bloom, but the bloom wasn't that pretty, has curled nicely into the pot. And then here is a second growth. And that's why she is positioned the way she is, just to make sure that she comes back into the pot. The latest additions, here's Millery crossed with long gips, settling in nicely, not rooted in but the roots are growing into the media, which is fabulous. Here's my little Aclandiae popping off leaves. <laughs> Check that out, how easy that goes. But um, it's growing beautiful little roots into the pot. It's been a struggling one from jump from when I got it. So I put it into a Rapiculus Lelia setup with just lava rock and some ceramics at the base and thought, you know, if you're going to go, you're going to go. It's coming around, but it's not really, if you know what I mean. This is the growth of the season right here, but this one growth is pushing three gorgeous roots. So, and the roots are going in the media, so that's going to stay. You know, as long as it's looking like that and is trying, it's going to stay. And there has not been any kind of pest damage on it. It just seems to be thinking that it's in a deciduous climate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but here's the Kautskiana I was mentioning earlier. You see, that's mine. So when I took the other one out of the box, I'm like, yo, you're big. So who is this? Well, turns out maybe we have a two cults Kianas based on the growth of the other one. And yeah, no, nope, there's nothing over there. But this is the first new nice growth it has grown for me. It was a struggling one. Let me tell you, I was not putting out high hopes for it. But here we are. Now, ideally, I don't want to be taking off too much of the new sheath, seeing as the pseudobulb hasn't hardened off yet. Sorry about that. And I'm getting completely distracted. There we go. My Ensfeldsiae is pleasing me because I may have lost what's going on in the back end here, and it was struggling for the longest time as well. But I did get a new growth growing this season and maintained it, thankfully. And it's growing the next new growth down there. Super pleased. Sangiloba. Here we are, 2.0, also starting on another new growth. And this was the growth of the season. And for the longest time, this one wasn't rooted in. It is now, though, happy, happy days. My first Sangiloba fell victim to, um, yeah, King. <laughs> back in the day when King thought everything at his eye level belonged to him. Ooh, guess who did the growling on that day? <laughs> so anyway, Flava doing fabulously. Pops TI growing another new growth there and another growth there. It's just, you know, Rapiculus Lelia season. Just happy days. Angareri recently came to me from Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones. Look, there she is, not quite rooted in yet but I still have the active root tip from that repot. Also, if you're a fiddle fan, once again, that video, two cameras, two perspectives. <laughs> I had fun doing that video because I felt a little bit more experienced now working with two cameras. So I could link that video for any orchid fiddle fans in the description as well. But moving across, here we have the gaggle of the next Rapiculus Lelias. Some of the leaves of the older bulbs are now starting to show, you know, it's their time, time to go. But I have had some beautiful growths, beautiful blooms from all of them, with the exception of Sinkuranas. I would love to see a Sinkurana bloom one day in my life. That would be nice. I know. In past videos, I've always said, you know, Sinkuranas, as long as they grow nicely for me, and they always do. I mean, how can you not? How can you not? And then these determined, determined roots growing. It's just like, just want to nip you right there. You know, like the chubby cheeks of a baby. Oh, I love, love. Look at that. Ha, yeah. Anyway, I always said, as long as you grow well, I'm happy to see you. And then sometimes you're like, <clears throat> I've got three Sinkoranas. Do you think I'm going to see any blooms from any of them? <laughs> Probably not, but never mind. Do you remember this one, Bayense? Well, maybe you don't. Maybe you're seeing my channel for the first time. But remember, 
for those of you that did see my orchid chores diary where I moved all my Rapiculus labia to this winter section here, look at that. This growth was the one that's coming out, shooting out sideways. And I told you, leave it alone. It's not dead. It has a party trick. It eventually starts to correct itself. And that's what's happening right now. We don't have that funny little growth direction going anymore. It is starting to right itself. Isn't that the weirdest little thing for this one? Anyway, I just thought it was, you know, every little Lelia here has its own little charms. And oh, if, oh, if we're going to talk about roots, I've got to show you Regentii. Look at that. Oh, yeah, when I stand here in the mornings for my coffee, I'm like, oh, I love you. I love you all so much. And uh, Millery over here is also just holding on. We got the thrip situation under control. It's now just time to make sure that this one just holds on and stays with us. But what I want to show you another little bit of an oddity. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> Gotta love my Harpophila. Not only is it grown, you know, it's single growth. It's a young plant. I don't have multiple growths, multiple directions. It, let me correct that. Look at this. This makes no sense at all. Not to me, maybe the orchid knows more than I do, but I have never had another growth starting so soon after a growth has finished and has not even bloomed yet. So this growth is finished, it's got its sheath. I'm hoping it'll bloom for me. The sad part, if there's an abnormality, is that that growth may not bloom and we're gonna have to wait for the next one for it to bloom. But I would love to see those bright orange blooms again during the winter because they last forever. And that pop of color during the darkest months. Oh, it just, I can't say I'm cheerful during the winter, but it, it at least lifts the spirit and is soothing to the mind that at least an orchid is in bloom. It's wonderful. Two new growths on Harpophila. Sorry, I get distracted. Like I said, I've got time today. And I hope that you have time to be here with me. <laughs> I'm really milking this one, aren't I? Who knows when I get to do this again? I can't tell you, <laughs> but like I said, let's go down another notch and tell you what's going on down here, where I have my Renanthera monachica to the left, and I have my Sirturcus praetamisa over there. They both come inside now as well. They are on that rotor, but what I want to show you on my Sirturcus is not just the gorgeous roots, but also from the back here, you can see so much better how the foliage this season has increased in size from when I got this orchid in 2021. Look at that. Yes, these are cut off, but this is a proper leaf, as is that one. Ooh, let me show you these roots, because why not? This is a great, great development for me, for this orchid. Here is Stan the man. <clears throat> Abnormal? Not if you know your Stan Hopias. <laughs> but I have only one. So <laughs> this one happens to be a very big one. And yes, it's got 13 new growths, some of which have already matured, but the 13th new growth is on its way. Let me show you. Right there. That would be number 13, besides the fact that it is growing out of its pot at the base. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Now, one thing I can tell you about my van der Denisoniana situation is that the two hooks under the east side patio, they actually belonged to the two pieces of the Stanhopia. I only have one piece left. But having had the Vandas underneath there for the longest, I was getting a little bit concerned. What am I going to do with my Stanhopia? <laughs> oh, well. The Banda Denisoniana is in rescue mode. Stanhopia has his hook back and he's going to need it because growing out of the base of the basket the way he's doing, um, this is the last time I'm going to be able to have him on the stand like that. Because not only does it take almost two people to actually lift him now, but it also takes a third person to look underneath the basket to position him in such a way that the growths are not being squashed. Yeah, I don't think we can do this again this time next year. <laughs> what a big problem to have. I love it. Gotta love an orchid that you can just throw water at it and don't have to worry about rot. That's Stan the man. 
Kimmy over here drinking like a fish at the moment. Yeah, that's that thing that you see sort of, you know, camouflaged by the hedge. Incredible. It's branching, four new growth, <clears throat> and I just discovered a fifth one recently. Then I have my beautiful Ascacentra Ampuyathea down here. By the way, this is my deep south for anybody that doesn't know my patio. Deep south meaning high humidity, still warm, lots of bright light, but no direct sun. That is where my Angrecoids live. But I did put my Ascacentra there as well because, you know, aerial roots, what do they like? High humidity, and she is a highlight orchid, works out beautifully. So, Bossery is in spike. That is that one you see there with the maidenhair fern growing in it. Something I could never achieve if I wanted a maidenhair fern in my home as a houseplant, because I do love them, but I never managed to grow them successfully. So, where you have maidenhair fern growing, you know your humidity is high. Hence, the Angrecoids live here. Then I've got the Renanthera citrina right there for the same purpose as with the Ascacentrum. And I've got Crestwood tomorrow star to the right of that, also in spike. Incredible. I am scared to bring this orchid inside. Not, you know, I hate bringing my Angrecoids inside. I just feel like I'm, you know, really captivating them even further. But selfish me wants to grow Angrecoids, and yeah, I am glad they're growing well. But the, 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 <clears throat> the, the, listen to me stutter, <laughs> the size that this orchid has put on in this season is astounding because the first ever leaf when I brought the orchid out is this one and this one was the one that was flopping over which I secured and then, you know, we pumped in the calcium, we pumped in the magnesium and re more recently even more calcium just to get the strength up and this leaf was starting to flop as well so I changed that up because it was growing during the warmest months of the year, the watering, the heat, the dryness, it was starting to look a little weak. And now that leaf is also holding itself up on its own. So you see the growth. This is the one that was sort of a little bit more floppy and weak from the winter growth. And this is what it's done since then. And whoo, we're gonna have some blooms if Klutz here doesn't make any mistakes. Moving on to the extension of the deep south, Look at this. I got myself another spike on my sweet sugar. <laughs> and this one was the growth that grew since it's been in my collection. So I'm pretty proud of myself. I got this orchid to bloom. The spike here is the one that Insu orchids and ADD probably cultivated properly. It only spiked when it was in my collection, but my spike doesn't have as many blooms. So we'll be working on that in 2023. Having said that, it acclimated pretty well. And bienvenida a España, mira. Baila, 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 baila. <laughs> Little bit of Gypsy Kings, anyone? Ah, oh, gorgeous, yes. So, then we have Pragmapedium Garen Weaver over there, who hasn't bloomed for me a lot, but I promise you there has been no ant infestation in that orchid all summer. I'm pretty proud of myself because every day it's been getting flushed with fresh water. Look, if it blooms, great. If it doesn't, it's not in my way over there. But berry odor, quelle surprise. <clears throat> what are you doing blooming this early in the season? That is usually a spring bloomer for me. Well, let's say late, late winter, early spring as the temperatures warm up. And I got a rogue spike that actually is in bloom. Now, I have seen other spikes already starting to form, but this orchid has gone bonkers again on the keiki front. I've got about four more keikis that have grown since the last time we saw it when I removed the keikis and put them in their separate setup. Look at this. These are they. Completely and totally and utterly rooted in. Just fan. Fantastic. Absolutely j'adore. I don't have to worry about pulling on them and they can live right next to the mother plant. Another orchid that has finally recovered from copper toxicity, it's up to me now not to make another mess of her, is my Epidendrum stem fordianum. You guys, this was a copper victim as well. I lost a lot of orchids because of that. And Stamfordianum always came with nasty leaves. Some of these are still the old ones. And she also came in a box where there was an orchid that was infected with Fusarium. 
Now I didn't manage to get more roots to grow into the pot, but she is fully rooted in. This At the beginning of the season she was a bit wobbly and unsturdy and that's why I hardly moved her and all I did was foliar spray everything that was outside, this being the growth from last year. Uh, you know, it didn't even have strength to open up, but foliar spray, foliar spray, the roots in the pot were dead and then it grew me this growth. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, you guys, I'm so happy. Look at this. Of all the losses I have suffered because of my dumb mistake there with the copper and the fully rooted in, even though I didn't get this root to get into the pot and I probably lost this root tip right here as well. The rest, oh, I'm so happy. And then here is my, you know, Rinko Stylus cross here variety cerula. It is doing well in that semi-hydro setup. I have had better growth on it this year than I've ever had on this orchid and I do believe that we have water roots so it is looking so much better. You can see the curvature of the stem. It is now starting to grow towards the light. If it wasn't growing in length it wouldn't be able to do that and my green hopper here or whatever it's called doing so well in its garbage bag and we haven't lost the root that is growing up against the garbage bag. It's probably going to work its way up towards the edge of the garbage bag and come and meet us one day but no blooms on any of these two this year but we've got root growth going and that has been the biggest struggle for these two orchids in my collection that I could actually cultivate some roots that would then eventually give us some blooms. Not exactly a pretty sight, but if it works, I oh, never mind the aesthetics, just please live. And while I talk to you about my chow pry, I'm gonna take advantage and mist it down a little bit. And you see that spike up there? That's another abnormality. This should not be happening <laughs> in November, but it is already smelling of beautiful blueberry sugar candy. It's just delicious. And Chow Praia has grown so, so well for me this year. The offshoots from the cracks in the stem, they are even larger now than when I got the orchid in the first place back in 2018. The root growth has been insane. Papilio Nante has grown massively as well. I know, I know, for all of you in the climates where Papilio Nante can be a hedge, or something like that, <clears throat> not in my climate, but let me, let me see if I can show you and also stay in focus. Because there is a Papilionanthe in here and I, I'm proud to say that because the Chao Praia has grown so well, you wouldn't think I had another orchid in here, but this is the Papilionanthe right here. Look where she's gotten to. What is this nonsense? Now, you know, I love it, not complaining. I have no issues with it. I have never seen this orchid perform so well here in my climate. She bloomed beautifully for me, first time with two spikes this year, but the root growth has gone bonkers. There are so many roots going into the hob material and all the way down. The roots just didn't stop growing. They continued to grow. It's been wonderful to watch. This orchid started down here at the beginning of the season because I had to make sure that the next growth point wasn't getting caught in the hob material. So that's why I remember where we started at the beginning of 2022 when this orchid started to wake up again after the cold. And look at what it's done in the very short period of time because remember it didn't even have the warmer months of spring to grow. It only had a narrow window. Oh but wow. So happy. I'm gonna have a problem because eventually, of course, you know, you say, yeah, you just take it off and, you know, plant it and this, that, and the other. <laughs> After all this, <laughs> I don't really see me wanting to cut it off in any place. <laughs> Happy days. But this is gonna be yum. Beautiful blooms coming up. You wanna have a look at the blooming alley? I'll see you there. And if not, let me tell you, if you've made it this far, thank you so, so much. <laughs> A couple of temperatures that are a little bit too low also for my liking and here goes a film. It's going to be maybe a show of about three, four days when all the leaves will be yellow and then one morning, poof, they'll all be on the floor and I can, you know, collect them. 
Ceratolabium, of course, going out of bloom. Cerola, <laughs> of course not. This orchid is like a little energizer bunny. It just blooms and blooms and blooms and blooms and blooms. Such a pleasure. Yeah, I just thought I'd show you my beautiful aphilum before it turns into um, Medusa, you know, just canes <laughs> until we look for the nubbins. Who knows, with all the abnormalities going on with the collection, this one might show nubbins sooner than expected as well. Right. Lots of abnormalities happening up there, but we've just recently seen that's Neostylus lucneri developing spikes. Let it develop, let it develop. And my Vanda Rainbow Forest to the left got pollinated by something, has a seed pod growing, and it's losing some leaves, which is a little concerning. I haven't seen them drop like that. Mm, maybe we're just rejuvenating. I gotta keep an eye out on that one. Stepping into the space of beauty and magic where I bring all my orchids that are in bloom So that I can enjoy the fragrances and see them from where I'm sat in the living room Which I should do more often because you know sitting at my desk. I don't see them I've got loose sneery. Well to have a spike this late in the season. I Don't even know if it's focusing. I've been in such bright sunshine. I can't see diddly squat. Oh, yeah, and then we have hibiki on the left Amethyst is going over. Oh, <laughs> Dinard, not just yet. Thank you, thank you, Dinard. And Tunia, good life number one over there. Definitely going over. The blooms are like, ooh, can't hold on to that lip much longer. It's too heavy and too big, kind of styly. My Zygopetalum bloom is over there, right there. I already lost one bloom. It hasn't been a great blooming for me, but to see some blooms, that was amazing. Normally I don't see them this time of year either. I have to wait until February. And down there, I still have some gorgeous blooms left from my Golden Peacock and my Maxima. Thoroughly enjoying them. But I want to show you something right tucked in the corner over there. And that is my Rhincodendron Cabagata in Verde. On top, right up there, 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 you can see my Vinosa Wabash Valley. And before I love and leave you, oh, let me love and leave you with Dendrobium Pocket Lover back in bloom. Who'd have thunk? Who'd have thunk? And now I am smelling that gorgeous lemon fragrance. It is very, very elegant. It is relatively strong. And if this little orchid can handle the spider mite damage it incurred, look at that. Yeah, I know. I was shocked too. It can handle that and still produce this and get stronger again. Hmm. Hey, Bicky. You've got your work cut out for you, boy. You have got your work cut out for you because the fragrance on this one, size of the blooms, the fragrance, did I say, is just like lemon, but it's a, it's a dessert kind of lemon, lemon tart, something like that. That's gorgeous, just gorgeous. So I hope if you stuck around for the entire tour, I know that I've missed some, but Huh, how can I do this? How can I explain this, Joan Anderson? I don't know if everybody had time today. <laughs> but these are my orchids. These are about 80% of them. And I hope that you enjoyed the tour. I certainly did just ramble and babble and talk and show and oh my goodness. And be bemused by the weird ongoings and abnormalities that well, whatever. I just take care of them and I respond to what they do and hopefully make them happy and make them want to stay in my collection. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have yourselves a fabulous day. On one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care and like the video. Bye.